Good morning, everyone. My name is Christine Gonzalez, and today I'm going to be talking to you about fast fashion waste and how we can employ the circular economy to mitigate its environmental impact. So, first and foremost, you may have seen these type of ads on like Instagram, TikTok, all over social media of brands like we have Cider, we have Shein, everyone knows Shein, um, and we have like even Amazon has their own like fashion brand. And we can see they appeal to like the consumer through like really affordable prices and really trendy clothing. Trendy just being like what's fashionable during a period of time. So with this in mind, this affordability and this desirability really leads to a mindset of overconsumption within the consumer. Because if clothing is on trend and it's cheap, why would you not buy a bunch of it so you can fit in, you know? So this is what we would call fast fashion, low cost clothing that's mass produced for like a trend of like a period of time, which trends, fast fashion trends are as short as like two weeks. On the other hand, we have slow fashion, which is more sustainably produced. So instead of being made in like mass produced, it's more set limited stock that is more produced using um, more artisan techniques. And what I'm looking at today, the circular economy is basically a system wherein the products of the economy are sent back into consumption and recycled and reused and they don't become waste. So, which led to my research question, how can, this, how can slow fashion practices in the circular economy be used to reduce fast fashion waste? For context, this image in the background is in the Atacama Desert in Chile, wherein they don't have many like restrictions on imports, so a lot of brands like H&M, like Gap, they dump a lot of their clothing here. So there's just a visual of what this actually looks like in the world. So to give you some more context, we can see here, this like uh, dash line right here is orange dash line, world GDP, the amount of money people have. And we see this purple line right here, clothing sales. Basically people are getting richer and they're buying more clothing. This teal line on the other hand, oh well, and then you can see right here, it's doubling in the amount of clothing you produce. The teal line on the other hand, people aren't using clothing for half as long as they were. So we're buying more clothing, we're getting richer, we're buying more clothing, and it's not being used for half as long, so where is it going? So this is what we would call a linear economy, basically, because this is a bit of a complex sort of diagram. Basically, we take resources, we make our clothing, and it ends up wasted. So a take-make-waste take, model. This I got from the wonderful Ellen MacArthur Foundation from Dame Ellen MacArthur herself. A fun fact, the fastest solo sailor to travel around the world. And as she was traveling around the world, she all, saw like all these different cultures and how they approached the fashion industry. She came back to Britain and she was like, hey, we can do better. So she wanted to promote the circular economy. Which, what is the circular economy? Basically, like I was saying earlier, we have making, making clothing out of more sustainable materials that aren't based in like, like right now fast fashion is using a lot of polyester and rayon. Making Instead of using that, we should use more natural materials that can also last longer, so the utilization will be longer. And once it is used, once we can't use it anymore, once you grow out of the clothing or something like that, have it being recycled instead of thrown away. And also this, is, this pertains to like the production of the clothing, having renewable resources instead of factories that rely on fossil fuels to like fuel their machinery. Now fast fashion is a global issue, as you can see here. We have these like, uh, like Southern Asia right here. There's a lot of where fast fashion is being produced. So like carbon dioxide emissions and water usage are in this area. And we have uh, like agricultural pollution and chemical pollution from pesticides and from dyes that are part of the manufacturing process of fast fashion. On the other side of the spectrum, we see over here in like England, like the UK, a lot of consumption and a lot of waste. So this is where like the buying of the clothing and the wasting of the clothing is happening. So to give you like, to put this into numerical data for you, each year about 2.9 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions are released from the fast fashion industry from production to transport, et cetera, et cetera. And that's about 10% of all greenhouse gases per year. And we have 24 trillion gallons of water are being used in the fast fashion industry. That's enough to meet the needs of about five million people in the world. And if we think this is where, as water gets more and more scarce, this is where a lot of it is going. 200 billion pounds of clothing are being wasted, not being sent back into the economy, and what everyone cares about, 
about $500 billion in revenue is being lost per year that's not going back into the economy. So I gave you a little bit of like the global context. So now I'll look at the United Kingdom, which you saw earlier, major consumer of clothing, of fast fashion clothing, and India, major producer of fast fashion clothing. So in the UK, these are just pictures of Topshop is now owned by ASOS, if you've heard of ASOS, and uh, Uniqlo, uh, now it's online mostly. But So in the UK, a major consumer, about 1.2 million tons of clothing is bought per year. Of that, about a third of it is wasted. Now we can see in UK there are some environmental impacts, but most of their weight in like the fast fashion effect, environmental effect, is the amount of waste they're producing. And also, the amount of uh, money that's being wasted by that waste. Yes. So, but there is hope. They are promoting sustainable measures in the UK, such as love, not landfill, and trade, which is, so trade, think like Salvation Army boxes. So you donate clothing, it's reused or even resold, recycled, basically any way to keep it out of landfills. And we also have Love Not Landfill, which is sort of the same idea, but it's more catered towards like younger audiences, which coincidentally are one of the main consumers of fast fashion. And on the other side of the spectrum, major producer of fast fashion, India, we can see uh, Fast fashion is a major part of the Indian economy. They make a lot of money off of this. And in fact, 45 million people are employed in the textile industry in India. And as this demand for fast fashion increases, as population increases, there's be more demand for clothing. It's 40% increase in cotton exports, like in clothing and such. And this is important because about 2.2 pounds of cotton is using 6,000 gallons of water. And when you think about the fact that 50% of Indians don't have access to clean water. Again, where is a lot of it going? And as India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world, it's predicted that it's going to be a four times, four times the amount of people are going to be buying clothing in India. So not only is it a major producer right now, it's going to become a major consumer. So again, this, this significant impact is going to be compounded. Even just right now, more than a million tons, the tons of textiles are being thrown away per year. So multiply that four by four. And again, a lot of waste being produced from this industry. But again, there is hope, thankfully, in India. They're promoting more of like a slow fashion. If you remember, slow fashion is more sustainably produced instead of mass produced. So we have companies like Anuthi, which are partnering. They're creating hand-woven saris and stoles. And stoles. So instead of like being um, produced in like factories, these are hand-woven by Indian artisans. And similar concept, Fioli Fioli. They are partnering with Indian artisans, so they are creating jobs for Indian artisans to create slow fashion that can be worn for longer, be recycled, and be kept in the economy. So, okay. Going back to the global concept, um, by using the circular economy, you can save about 3 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions. CO2e is a, basically a measure of warming, global warming effect, so the amount of carbon dioxide it would take a, another greenhouse gas, like methane, to create a similar warming effect. We have 25 billion gallons of water being saved to meet the needs of people who don't have access to clean water. Almost 450 million pounds of solid waste being kept out of landfills and reused for people who don't have access to clothing because it is getting expensive. And $192 billion saved by 2023. And where is that money going? Back into the economy. So. To give everyone a synopsis, because I like synopses. Fast fashion in the global context, significant environmental impacts. UK, major consumer, but they are starting to recycle, to reuse, and it's becoming more of a sustainable system. And in India, major producer, but they are turning towards slow fashion and creating clothing that lasts. Now, this is a fairly new application of the circular economy. If you look on the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's website, they show the circular economy in its different applications in different parts of society. I would have to look, look more into that, but I focus mainly, mainly on um, textile industry because I was, I'm looking at fast fashion. And also, if we're going to start relying on secondhand reused products, we have to take into consideration a lot of lower income people rely on these secondhand like thrift stores and all that. So if we're going to start increasing the demand, will the supply be able to meet that? Now, I couldn't do everything in one semester. 
So here's some more future research. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> so how can slow fashion be made more accessible? If you look at any slow fashion websites, it's a little expensive. I've seen some of the saris on a new fee were upwards of $1,000. So while it is good for the environment, it's not accessible to all income levels. Um, where else has the circular economy even applied successfully? I only looked at the UK and India. There is more to be researched in that area. And how can we shift consumer mindsets? Right now we see a lot of like shopping spree, clothing haul, all that sort of mentality, like more is better. So the real question is how can we shift to mindset of less is more? Thank you very much.